make mention of and, and let everybody know about. Uh, of course, uh, coming up uh, for uh, this week, uh, we were, we've been blessed to have the opportunity. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, feed the uh, high school soccer team, the girls, on Tuesday and we're able to share the gospel with them, and I believe there were somewhere around about 20-something uh, that were there. So uh, that was a, a wonderful opportunity that the Lord had given us, so uh, thank the Lord for that. And then uh, tomorrow evening, uh, we're going to have the opportunity to share uh, with uh, the gospel and then also feed the uh, Horace Maynard uh, Middle School football players and cheerleaders tomorrow evening afternoon and so uh, if uh, some of you ladies have talked with Debbie and are going to be helping uh, the plan is is to be there around 3:30, and uh, they're wanting to start around 3:45. so just to, to keep everybody up to date on that be much in prayer remember that tomorrow evening another wonderful opportunity God's give us and then of course on Friday uh, we've got a busy day uh, but we are looking forward to it, and uh, we're very thankful for this opportunity. Friday morning, we'll start our Bible release time. And so uh, I would encourage everybody, please, uh, to, to be praying for Bible release time on Friday morning. We're going to be here, if you're volunteering, uh, we're going to be here and meet at 7.50 uh, Friday morning. And the first group will be here at 8.10. So we'll probably be leaving the church, those that will be riding the bus. Uh, down to the middle school uh, we'll probably leave the church here at about 8 o'clock uh, maybe a few minutes after to get down there get them picked up by 10 after 8 and back to here so uh, we'll start and then we'll have a break and then we'll be back to the church at 12 uh, for the elementary age so keep that in mind and keep that in prayer also Friday night at 6 o'clock uh, will be the uh, Northern Association uh, uh, annual meeting and that will be at Milan Baptist Church and so that will start at 6 so keep that in mind if you are a messenger uh, that is going uh, please keep that in mind encourage you to come be a part of that and even if you're not you can still come and uh, it will it'll be a good service so keep that in mind remember that alrighty those are just a couple announcements that we've got coming up we don't want to forget we want to continue to be much in prayer and remember the uh, Christmas backpack ministry and uh, the information is in the back in the vestibule if you'd like to pick up a backpack or a piece of paper back there with what you can fill and put in that uh, please we encourage you to do that be a part of that ministry and the deadline for that is October the 22nd uh, Cheryl do you have anything to, to say about the backpacks or anything to add tonight keep that in mind and then also uh, pick up a shoe box if you hadn't picked one up yet maybe you already have and maybe you want to fill another one uh, take one of those home with you and uh, be praying over that and the deadline for that is November the 15th so keep that in mind remember that alrighty I'm going to have a word of prayer and I'm going to ask brother Hunter if he'd come tonight and lead us in song father we thank you Lord for another opportunity just another privilege it is to be back in your house tonight Lord we ask and we pray this evening that, Father, you would bless this service, bless this time, Father, of worship and study. We pray and we ask that, Father, you would bless our children, Lord, our classes downstairs with uh, mission friends and the RAs and the GAs and, Father, even our teens in action, Lord, our class, that you would bless there. And, Father, our prayer is, is that, God, you would grow our, our children and our youth and, Father, that you would instill in them and encourage them, Father, uh, that they would see that, Lord, wherever they're at, Lord, they could be missionaries and share the gospel for you. And that, Father, you may even now begin to work in some of their hearts and in some of their lives. And, Father, you may be calling or that you may call some of these young people out eventually one of these days, Father, to go and serve on the front lines in the mission field for you. And, Lord, that would be wonderful, Lord, and we thank you for that. And we pray that, Father, Lord, that uh, you would help us as a church, that, God, we would be a church that is ready to go. That, Father, if you call us, Lord, we would be ready to answer that call to go for you, Lord. And, 
to share the gospel. Father, we thank you for doors and opportunities you open up for us. Thank you, Father, for the opportunities of ministry that, God, you give us just this week and how, Lord, you give us the opportunity to share the gospel, Lord, with the, uh, the young ladies, Lord, the high school soccer team there. We thank you for them, and we just pray that you would continue to speak to the hearts and lives, Lord, of each and every one that were there, and we pray that, Father, if there was uh, some there that did not know you as their Savior, I pray that, Father, Lord, you would uh, speak to their heart, deal in their life. God, I pray that, Lord, you would use... Uh, Lord, the other friends or teammates that God do know you to be a witness and a light to them, that they would come to that saving knowledge and understanding of you, Father. We pray for the opportunity tomorrow night. God, we ask that, God, you would help us, Lord, just to show your love to them, that they could see you in us. And, Father, we pray for your word, that, God, it would uh, go and deal in their heart. And, Father, we pray for those that there that are lost, that they would have the opportunity Lord, to hear your word, and Father, have the opportunity to believe on you and call on your name unto salvation. Father, we just pray your blessings upon the service tonight, and all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing 187 out of the white book.
anyone else tonight have a prayer request? Lord knows what we need when we need it. Sure does. Okay. God will send the rain. Anyone else? Anyone else this evening? Hmm. Let's remember this. Anyone else? Beeson's caregiver, Ashley. Anyone else this evening we need to pray for? Well, if not, let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's remember these requests tonight as we do pray and remember all these that have been on our screen as well. Lord, we thank you, Father, so much for just another opportunity to come and be in your house. We thank you so much, Father, for all that you do for us, God, your, your many blessings, God, just your grace and your mercy. And, Father, we pray tonight, Lord, as we go to study your word, we ask that, Father, you would open our hearts. And, God, we pray that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We pray tonight that, Father, you would help us, Lord, to see and teach us, Father. Lord, we pray tonight, Father, that you would be with these requests that, Lord, have been mentioned here tonight. Father, we just continue to pray for Roger Pepper and we thank you so much for bringing him through the surgery. We thank you for being with him and Debbie. And, Father, we ask that, Lord, you continue to give Roger the healing and the recovery and the strength that, Father, he needs. We pray that, Father, you continue to be with Debbie and, Lord, help her, God, and be near to her as well, Lord, as she takes care of Roger. We pray that, Father, Lord, you would uh, be with the family, Lord, of the police officer that was killed this past week. Father, we just ask that, Lord, you would comfort this family and be ever near to them, Lord, in this time. God, we know that, Lord, only you are the, the source of peace and comfort. And, God, we ask that you would please just be ever near to them. We pray for uh, Bob Arwood, Lord, that uh, father that possibly potentially had a stroke. We ask that, God, you would be with him. Our prayer is, Father, is that, uh, Lord, you would just help him and be with him, Father, help him recover and heal. God, we pray, Father, Lord, for the uh, the Whaley family, Lord, and the passing of, of Charles and his wife. And we ask that, Lord, you would be ever near, Lord, to his sons and, Father, just that family, Lord, during this time. Father, we pray, Father, Lord, for, uh, for rain, Lord. You know exactly what we need. And, Father, you know when we need it. And, Father, Lord, we know that you're uh, a God that, Lord, will, will send the rain. And, Father, you know we know that, God, you will give us Lord, what we need in your due time. And, Father, we just pray for that. God, we ask and we pray tonight, Father, that, Lord, you continue to be with Hunter's uh, friend, the family there, the friend of his that passed away this past week that took his life. We ask that, God, you would be with them. God, we pray, Father, Lord, for Cullen's friend, that we ask that, God, you continue to uh, touch him, Lord, and, and bring healing and strength and help him, Father. I, we pray. God, we ask and pray, Lord, for uh, Miss Beeson's caregiver, Ashley. Father, we just pray for her and 
the upcoming surgery, Father, that she has, Lord. And we pray, Father, tonight that, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the uh, uh, the, the the word, Lord, the, the copy of your word that was passed out on the campus of UT this past this week and, Father, on Monday. And we just pray for every one of those Bibles and the hands that they went into, Father. We ask that, Father, they may not read it tonight. They might not read it, Lord, this week or next week. But, Father, there'd be a day that would come that, Lord, they would open up your word, and, Father, that, Lord, you would speak to them, Lord, in that very moment, that very time of their life that they're in. And, Father, we pray that, Lord, if though, for those that are lost, that, Lord, they would, uh, Lord, just uh, hear your word, and, Lord, as you speak to them, God, convict their heart and, and deal with them. And, Father, I pray that they would see their need, realize their need for you, Lord, as a Savior, and that, Father, they, they would call upon your name and accept you and be saved. And, Father, that change and that difference, Lord, would come to their lives father we just pray father tonight for our teachers and the students father we pray for all the requests that lord we have that are on our prayer list in the bulletin we pray for all those uh, requests that we have the father there's so many lord that we have that are on our screen and father you know each and every need and father we just pray that you would be with them we pray tonight for the lost we all have someone uh, that we work with or that we know that's a family member or friend or neighbor uh, acquaintance, co whatever the case may be, we know someone that's lost and doesn't know you. And I pray that, Father, you would help us, Lord, to be that light and to be that witness for you. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we certainly have a lot to continue to pray for. And uh, I encourage everyone that uh, would continue to pray and uh, before we uh, get into the study tonight, uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and turn uh, in your Bibles. Um, we're going to look at the Scripture here in just a little bit. We're going to go through uh, kind of some points in our lesson before we read the Scripture tonight. Um, so, uh, But you can go ahead and already have your Bibles turned there and be ready. Uh, we're going to be reading uh, back in the Gospel according to John and John tonight and chapter 1. And uh, we're going to start there with verse 14 but uh, before we uh, get into the lesson this evening uh, I would like to go back and I would like to read um, uh, from the um, voice of the martyrs book that I've been reading from some on Wednesday night and uh, it's just a, a very uh, encouraging uh, I believe that uh, we see just the faith of these people that are willing uh, to go and and to count the cost and and to truly lay down their lives for the cause of Christ. And uh, I, to me, it speaks volumes to me. And um, the, uh, this, this uh, story, uh, the title of it uh, is, Will You Choose to Live or Die? What Do You Say? And uh, it comes from uh, England. And uh, it's about a story about a man by the name of John Lambert. And uh, maybe you all have maybe heard this story before. Um, but it starts out like this. It says the questionnaire, or the questioner, uh, was Henry the Eighth, and of course Henry the Eighth was the king of England, and uh, he had unrestrained power in the land. Uh, the criminal who stood before him, charged with heresy, was John Lambert, and uh, he was a Greek and a Latin tutor, and that was his occupation. That was how he. Uh, that was what he did, and Lambert. Uh, challenged his pastor uh, for delivering a sermon that didn't agree with Scripture. Lambert was brought before the Archbishop of Canterbury and later before King Henry, quoting from the Scriptures and explaining the original Greek. Lambert pres uh, presented his case to an assembly of bishops, lawyers, justices, and peers. The two sides argued back and forth until Henry, bored with it, presented Lambert with a final choice. After all the reasons and instructions of these knowledgeable men, are you now satisfied, he asked. Will you choose to live or die? What do you say? And Lambert answered. He took a deep breath and answered confidently. I commend my soul to the hands of God, and my body I give to you. Henry told him at that moment that he must die. Lambert's death was slow and torturous. 
he was burned at the stake. And as he was burning at the stake, he lifted up his hands in worship, declaring, none but Christ, none but Christ. And the scripture verse that goes with this uh, devotion is, comes from Joshua 24, 15, where Joshua told the children of Israel, he said, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I'm reminded of this, and it kind of goes along. It's, we have a choice, don't we? Each and every day, we have a choice. We have a choice every day of whom we're going to serve. I'm reminded of uh, David had mentioned about uh, praying for rain, and I thought about the story as soon as he mentioned I thought about Elijah. And uh, I thought about just in reading this devotion, uh, the Lord reminded me about Elijah. And, you know, Elijah went to Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal were there at Mount Carmel. And what did Elijah say? He said, how long will you halt between two opinions? He said, if God be God, serve him. Or if Baal be God, serve him. And we know that day that God proved himself who he was, that he was God. I'm reminded about the three Hebrew children, how the Bible said that they did not bow to the music when it was played to worship the God that the king, the image, the statue that he had set up. And we know that he even told him, he said, listen, if you don't bow down in worship, I'm going to cast you into the fire and furnace. And, and they said, go ahead, for we will not bow, we will not serve, we will not worship the one true, the one true and living God. And we know that God proved himself that day uh, to the king that God was truly God. And we find right here that this man, John Lambert, was willing to lay his life down for the cause of Christ. And how, I know for me, it challenges me. It challenges me. Uh, none of us ever know what we're going to face tomorrow. We don't know what we're going to face tonight. We don't know when we're ever going to be faced with that same circumstance or that same situation in our life. And I hope and pray that if we are, that we could say, I'm going to choose the Lord. Amen? I'm going to choose God. I'm going to live for Him. Today, I'm going to choose to worship Him and live for Him. So tonight, uh, we're going to continue on with our study on how to study the Bible. And um, we are going to go right back into uh, the study this evening. And uh, I have uh, really enjoyed going through this study. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, so much into it. And I'm trying to get as much information uh, put in these as I can, but there's so much more, but I'm trying not to just overload us either with everything, so uh, I'm trying my best. I want to make mention of this. Um, Mr. Francis has been so good and so helpful uh, with this, and I know that I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but um, if you would like a copy of the outline or the notes that we have that's actually been on the screen, uh, Francis has made that available on our website, our church website. So you can go on our church website. There's a link there. It says uh, Pastor's Outlines, I believe is what it is. And uh, you can click on that, and those are available. So you can go on there and look at those uh, and, and, and add to your notes if you was to miss something or not be able to write something down. Or you can share them. Share them with someone else that you may know. So um, if you would like, you can go on there and you can do that. All right. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to continue on how to study the Bible. And the main topic tonight that we're going to look at and study on is interpretation. Now, last time, wasn't last week, but the week before, we talked about observation. And what is observation? Observation is what do we see, right? What is it that we see in the Scripture and in context here? Tonight is interpretation. And uh, this is a big one. What does it mean? And uh, I would say tonight that most of us sitting here, uh, if we was to take a scripture and we was to read it and we was to go around the room, we probably all would have an agreement uh, on about everything probably somebody says or what it means to them or how they took it or how they interpret it. But we all would probably get maybe a, 
maybe a little bit of different meaning from that or a different twist. So there's one thing that we've got to keep in mind tonight, and we're going to look at that, and that's fine, that's great, that's good when we're studying the Bible, but we've got to continue to keep in mind is uh, that when we read and interpret the Scripture, uh, there is some, there's a couple of things that we've got to keep in mind while we're reading, while we're studying. We're going to look at that this evening. So what does it mean? What does the Scripture mean? We all want to know what it means, right? When we're reading God's Word, when we're studying God's Word, that's why we read it, right? We, when we read, we want to understand. We want to know what it means. And I believe with first place, like we've always said, it starts with prayer, right? Starts with praying and asking the Lord to help us reveal those things to us. But also, not only does the Holy Spirit give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but the Holy Spirit, and we're living, I'll say this, we're living in a day and time that we have so many resources, I mean, we have so many resources that we can tap into and we can utilize and we can use that can help us understand the Scripture, understand God's Word better, that gives us a better interpretation of God's Word. So we're living in a great time uh, to be able to, to gain the understanding and knowledge of this. So uh, three truths that we want to remember tonight, starting off, and uh, these are just three truths here that, that uh, I have come across in, in just my study, uh, through education, through uh, learning. Uh, the first one tonight that we want to look at of the three truths, number one is this, and this one's very important. Number one, it takes time to expose oneself to revealed truth and digest it. Keep that in mind. It takes time. Uh, we we read we talked about that we uh, kind of studied a couple weeks ago when we're reading when we're studying what was it we said read the scripture read the verse if you're reading a verse a day or a couple verses a day or a chapter a day whatever it is that you're doing in your daily Bible reading and your daily study. Take that. You've got to go through it slow. God's Word is not something you can rush through. Read that Scripture uh, one, two, three, over and over. How many ever times it takes, read it over and over. Uh, there, there'll be, uh, through the week, uh, just kind of give you an example of kind of what I do. Uh, the Scripture that I'll begin to read on and I'll begin to pray about and study. Uh, on Monday, I'll begin to read it. I'll go back on it Tuesday. I'll go back Wednesday. You'll read, read, read. And get that in your mind. Get that understanding. Uh, of that scripture so it takes time when you are reading and studying God's word God's word what is God's word it is truth right it is revealed truth and it takes time to digest God's word to digest truth so keep that in mind it takes time when you are reading and studying the second one there is is there is more truth in the Bible that we can grasp in one or many readings I'd have to say amen to that Amen? Listen, you can read the Bible. You may be sitting here tonight. You may be 80 years old. You may be got saved when you were 10. And the day you got saved, you started reading the Bible. And you've read it, and you ain't missed a day. And you get a gold star like we used to get in Sunday school, okay? So you, you've not missed a day for reading God's Word, and you've read God's Word for 70 years, and you've studied God's Word, and you've maybe made it a point that you're going to read the Bible through every year you've read it through. I guarantee you, no matter how many times you've read the Bible through or read the same Scripture or the same verse, God still speaks, doesn't he? God still speaks, and He's still fresh. It's still new, and that's the good thing about the Lord. There is more truth in the Bible than we can grasp in one or many readings. So keep that in mind. It takes time. Uh, it takes practice and experience to hone the necessary skills to develop an understanding of the text with accuracy. It takes time. It takes practice. Anything you do, you ask anybody. Uh, whatever it is, whether you're practicing ball, whether you've got practicing an instrument, whatever it is, your craft, your trade, your job, whatever it may be, listen, it takes practice. It takes work. you got to put some time in. It takes time to, to develop those skills as you begin to read and study. And the more you read, the more you study, the more you use these resources, the more you'll understand and know how to study, uh, you will grow in that 
study. You'll develop more skill. You'll develop more experience and honing in those skills. So keep those things in mind. Uh, just some basic principles that we want to keep in, uh, keep in mind tonight. They all start with a C, so this will be very easy for you to remember uh, for tonight. Uh, but we want to look at a few of them here. It says, number one, content. Content. That word content, it is that which is actually before you in the text. So the content of it, what you're actually reading, what you're actually seeing, what is actually before you in the text. And then the next one is craft. What is craft? You are beginning to bring together the pieces of your observation. So take for an example, we talked about last week observation, right? What do we see? When you take God's Word, and just for an example here tonight, just to use this, in John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, that ver very first verse, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What is it that we see? What just stands out to us right there in that first verse? What is it that we see? What is it that we observe? Number one, in the beginning, right? In the beginning was the Word. And we know that words capitalize. So it's referencing, it's meaning, it's pointing toward someone. Uh, it's capitalized, and it says, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we know that it's referencing, and it's pointing towards somebody. So those are some things that we see. So we see right there, who could it be pointing towards? Jesus. Amen? That's who it's pointing towards. So we find right there that content craft as you begin to bring those pieces together of your observation the next one is context context what goes before and after I believe this is very very important and I have learned this and I'm continuing to learn this as a preacher as a pastor as a student of God's word I consider myself a student a pupil of the word of God because I am ever learning I am ever growing and I'll be the first one to tell you I do do not know it all, and I don't claim to know it all. I don't claim to know everything. I've got a lot of time left, I hope and pray, that I can learn and grow. But listen, I don't know it all, but I do know this. I've learned this, that context is everything. You've got to keep what you're reading, the Scripture, the context of Scripture. When you begin to study God's Word, context is everything. It's important. It is key while you are studying it. All right? Context. And then comparison. Comparing Scripture with Scripture. Sometimes I like to do this as I study, and, and this is a really good study if you like to do this, but chain reference scripture right maybe there's a thought in the scripture maybe maybe you want to study on the word beginning and you go and you look up your concordance or you may have a bible concordance in the back of your bible whatever it may be you might have a strong's concordance and you look up the word beginning and it's got a whole list of the word beginning of where it's found in the Word of God, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it has the chapter, the book, chapter, and the verse of where it's at. And you begin to go, and you may just run, run it all the way from Genesis to Revelation, the one word beginning. And you take that word, and you take those scriptures that you begin to look at and study with that one word beginning in it, and you begin to compare them, and you begin to look at them, and you begin to see how God starts to put pieces together, how in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God then you take it all the way to Genesis and what does it say in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth you take it all the way to Revelation what does Jesus say I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I am the first and I am the last you can begin to look at that so that is another good way of studying comparison comparing scripture with scripture and then the lastly uh, the last principle tonight that we want to look at is consult, uh, consultation. And that is the use of reliable resource tool after you've done personal study. And I, I think about that as using resources. We live in a day and time where there are a ton of resources. Now, if you are a person that likes a book, 
That is wonderful. I like a book, too. I like a paper book. Now, if you are a tech-savvy person and you love to do everything paperless and you want to do it online, that's fine. That's great, too. I will do that, too, at times. Uh, and I've found that, honestly, it's a lot quicker that way sometimes, and it'll help you. But there's a great site that you can use. It's Blue Letter Bible, and it'll have uh, a lot of resources in it. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can use, but there's a lot of good resources out there that we can use and I'm going to go over a few of them here towards the end tonight but moving on we've got 10 interpretive rules that we can utilize but we're only going to look at the first four of these tonight so uh, the first one is work from the belief that the Bible is authoritative that it is the very word of God we've got to keep that in mind when we go to study God's Word, number one, the first and fo foremost thing that we got to keep in mind is that God's Word is the authority. Amen? God's Word is the standard. It ought to be the authority of the way we live our lives. Amen? Uh, we, we know that. We know that God's Word, it is the very Word of God. Uh, we ought to interpret difficult passages in the light of clear passages let the bible interpret itself when we're reading over something sometimes and when we come across a part in say a chapter or a couple of verses that we don't quite understand uh you you can don't get hung up on them keep on reading through keep on reading through that chapter go back to the beginning of the chapter and then go read all the way through and then go all the way to the end of that chapter a lot of times it will kind of explain itself it will interpret itself it'll play out it'll help you understand now if you still don't understand maybe there's a series of about a verse or two there that you don't understand what they're saying get down there and begin to dig it out get your bible dictionary get your concordance look up the greek the hebrew word uh, get down and begin to study that. Maybe you want to get you a commentary and look at a commentary and see what the uh, whoever wrote that commentary, what they say about it. Get that out. Begin to use that as you study. Uh, I, I know our Sunday school classes, they use a great commentary. I believe it is. Uh, Herschel Hobbes, he has a great commentary. He does a great job on how he went through and his commentary on the Bible. Uh, utilize that uh, when you're studying your Sunday school lessons. It's great to be able to use. Number three. Remember that Scripture, and this is what I kind of go back to what we opened up with, talking about we all could get a million different opinions and interpretations and ideas. Here's what, This is very important. And, and I hope I don't step on your toes, but I do mean to step on your toe when I say this, okay? Get this tonight. Remember that Scripture has only one intended meaning. Keep that in mind. Scripture has one intended meaning, that's been deposited by its author. Who's the author? God's the author. But we also know that not only is God the author, that it has been written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit. So Scripture has one intended meaning, but many applications. Many applications. It can be applied many different ways, but it has one intended meaning and purpose interpret personal experience in the light of scripture i want to read that again we're not careful i know we do this from time to time we're all guilty of it interpret interpret personal experience in the light of scripture your personal experience should be backed up with scripture amen it should be backed up with scripture and not scripture in the light of your personal experience your personal experience needs to be backed up with Scripture tonight. Amen? This gets a little, here's where it gets a little rough, all right? Here's where the rubber meets the road. Salvation tonight. What is true biblical salvation? The Bible, Scripture teaches that true biblical salvation comes as you must be born again, you must be born of the Spirit of God. There must be re regeneration that takes place in your heart, in your life. The Spirit of God begins to take up His home, His abode in your life. He begins the process of sanctification, which is, which is a progressive, continual work in your life, in my life, and in our hearts. And, he begin, and, and true biblical salvation tonight comes with a change. True biblical salvation comes with 
a change. And what I'm saying is, is when God saves your soul, he makes a change on the inside of you. That old way of living, that sin you used to go to and you used to live and be a part of, listen, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me tonight. We all are tempted, right? We all are tempted. We all sin. We all fail. We all come short. But I'm talking about a lifestyle that you're living. Your desire, your lifestyle, there should be an evident change in your life when you are truly saved and born again. You become a child of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. True biblical salvation comes with a change. So we've got to continue to keep that in mind. Personal experience in the light of Scripture, all right? All right, moving on tonight. Let's get into God's Word. I want to take a little bit of tonight on how we interpret this Scripture that we're going to read, and we're going to have some points tonight on what we're seeing, how we've observed it, observed it, and how we interpret, all right? So look at verse number 14 in chapter 1. We're staying with the Gospel of John tonight. Maybe you have taken on the Gospel of John as your personal Bible study, your daily Bible reading every day. And uh, we're just kind of helping you out as we go along this. So first, uh, we look in John chapter 1, verse 14, and here's what the Bible says. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So let's go back to verse 14 tonight. And what are the first things that stand out to us right here, just in verse number 14? What is it that we're observing? All right. In verse 14, what do we see? What are we observing? We, we see what's some key words that stick out to us. Number one is the word word, right? Number one, it's word. It's capitalized. And what do we see right there about that? We see, and the word it took an action, right? Something happened with the Word. What happened? It was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. And what, what did it do? Once the Word was made flesh, what happened? It dwelt among us. Amen? It dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what is John trying to hammer home here? What did John, we know John's the author, we know God's the author, but John was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God as the Spirit moved upon him to write this word. John was, we find right here that the Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. Jesus became flesh. Amen? Jesus became flesh and blood. He was born of a virgin. He was flesh incarnate. We know that. John is trying to get that message across right here to his readers. That's what he's showing us. That's what he's telling us here. The Word, Jesus, is the Word. He was made flesh. He dwelt among us. John was, had a first-hand experience. Do you know that? This writer, this writer of the Gospel of John, he saw Jesus he had a first-hand encounter with the Lord. He saw him with his own eyes. He touched him with his own hands. He hugged him. He was close to him. He was near him. This John was the beloved disciple. This was the, the follower of John. The John, this was the follower of Jesus. This was the same John that while Jesus was walking on the shore of Galilee that we read about Sunday, that he was in the boat with his father Zebedee and his other brother James. And while they were in the boat, Jesus called and he said, Hey, come follow me. I will make you a fisherman of men. This is the same John that forsook his father and forsook the nets and the hired workers and servants and they left the boat, and he went and followed Jesus. That's the same guy. He had a first-hand experience with the Lord. And he's saying, listen, he dwelled among us. And John's saying, here's what I got to behold. Here's what my eyes seen. Here's what I got to behold. I got to behold his glory, the glory of Jesus Christ, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father of grace and truth you see what is John telling us here 
Jesus, of course, became flesh. But John beheld the glory of Jesus, the glory of the only begotten of God, the Father. We find that he got to see Jesus. And did you catch the two words that he used to explain our Lord and the glory of our Lord and the glory of God the Father, the only begotten of God the Father? He said he got to behold full of, Jesus was full of grace and truth. Now that's important. Because as we read on, we're going to need that. All right? Look at verse 15. What does it say? John bear witness of him. Now, he flips it a little bit, so don't get confused here. Now John writes back and he flips to John the Baptist. Okay? Now he's referring to John the Baptist. And he says, John bear witness of him. John the Baptist bear witness of him. And cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. He was before me. You say, Preacher, how do you know it was John the Baptist? Well, John the Baptist said these words. When you go back to Matthew, when you go back to Mark, when you go back to Luke, when you go back on on up the, the chapter a little bit, we find here that John the Baptist was talking about the Lord as well. So we know that's who John is referring to as John the Baptist there. That John the Baptist bore record of Jesus. He bare witness of him. Now, why is this verse important? Well, look at this point. We find right here the law of God in the Old Testament, the witness of two was very important. The witness of two was very important. And we find here that that John was relating to his audience, which was the Jewish people. That was John. That was who he was writing to. If John had an arrow that he was trying to throw and hit that target, the target was the Jewish people. That was where his message was going. He was writing to his own family, his own people, the Jewish people, the people that, that as he wrote here, they said that Jesus came into his own and his own received him not. That's who John was writing to. He was trying to get them to see here. You see, John used a lot of Old Testament language. He went back to in the beginning. He tied in the beginning with Christ and with God. He was trying to hammer home the message and the point that Jesus truly is the Son of God, that He is the same as God the Father. He's the same as Yahweh. He's the same as the God of the Old Testament. He is the Son of God. That was what John was trying to proclaim. That was what he was trying to get a point, his point across. We find here the author, God, of course, with John as the writer, inspired by the Holy Spirit, had a meaning for the Hebrew people. He was trying to point that to them. And here's what he says. By using the Old Testament, he understood they would understand the language of how important a two witnesses was when you go back and study the Old Testament. What does he find right here in verse 16? And he says, And of his fullness have all we received. And grace for grace. John's saying, listen, we have received the fullness of God, the fullness in Christ Jesus. The fullness of Christ, we have received grace for grace. And then he comes in in verse 17, he says this. And here's where he really hits them. For the law was given by Moses. Man, he took it back to Moses. They loved Moses. I can't stress that enough. They loved Moses, man. Moses was, he was the man in the Old Testament for the Hebrew people. And they loved him. And John referenced and he said, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Look at that. The law was truth only. When you read the Old Testament, you read the Ten Commandments, and you read the book of Leviticus, you find the Levitical law, it was truth. God's Word, that was God's Word. God's Word was pinned down. This is what God gave to Moses. It was His Word. God can't lie, can He? Anybody awake? God can't lie, can He? No, God can't lie. So God's Word, what He spoke and what He gave to Moses, it's truth. There's no lie in it. And we know that The law is truth. But not only, you see, the law was truth only. When you study about the law, there was no grace in the law whatsoever. The law didn't care. The law said this, if you've committed adultery, we're going to bring you out here and we're going to stone you, we're going to kill you. If you've stolen from somebody, you come on right down here, we're going to cut your hand off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. 
The law was real. It was hardcore. But what does it say? Jesus. With Jesus, what came? Grace and truth. You see, Jesus Christ is truth. He's the word of God. He's the law. He's the word. Everything's wrapped up in him. But the great thing about Christ is, is not only is he truth, but he's grace. And when he came, what was he able to do? He was able to go to that woman that was sitting at the well that Jesus began to talk to that had five husbands. And he said, yeah, the one you're living with right now, he's not your husband either. What did he do? He gave her truth, but he extended grace. Think about the lady that was caught in the very act of adultery and they brought her before the Lord Jesus. And what did they do? They brought her out there and they said, Lord, we, we've caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Now we know according to the law, the law tells us that we are to stone her and put her to death. And the one that she was with, he's to be put to death as well. But Lord, what do you say? What did Jesus do? The Bible said that he stooped down in the sand and he, he just began to put his finger in the sand. He said, and he spoke these words. Jesus spoke truth. He did not go back on his word but here's what he said he said he that is without sin cast the first stone now that hit every one of them because every one of them standing around there was with sin and they just began to walk away and he asked the woman he said woman where where are your accusers she said I, I don't know Lord they're gone he said neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more you see with Jesus comes truth but also comes grace. And I think about as a 11-year-old boy, lost and undone in my sin. What did Corey Carroll deserve as an 11-year-old boy? Same thing he still deserves today. I deserve hell. Because I was a sinner. And I sinned and I disobeyed the very word and the commandment of God. I was a sinner. Sin was in my life. Now, 11-year-old, you say, well, he couldn't have done much wrong. But no, but I'm a sinner because the Bible teaches us that sin reigned from, the, from Adam all the way to Moses and those after him. We're all under that curse. We're all under that uh, sinful nature. But as an 11-year-old boy, I deserved hell. But grace stepped in. And he saved me. And as he did for most and many of you that are sitting here tonight at one point in time in your life, you deserved hell, but thank God grace stepped in, and he saved you. I'm thankful for truth tonight, but I'm so thankful for grace. I'm thankful for God's grace tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. God, we ask and we pray this evening that, Father, Lord, you would continue to speak to us, speak to our hearts. God, help us, Lord, as we continue to read and study your word, that we can take some of these that just these helps that you've given us God we know we can't use them all Lord and don't let us get so frustrated and aggravated by trying to study and use every little bit of thing and use it in the very order we need but Lord just let us take and glean from it and use the things that help us to grow and and over time we'll be able to add more of this in but Father I pray that Lord you would help us all inspire us all to read and study more of your word and grow closer to you in our walk and our relationship with you and all this we ask in your name Amen. As they come tonight, as they get ready to, to have a song, a time of invitation, um, I do have these. I don't, Francis already moved them, removed them off the screen tonight. But a couple of resources that I use personally, I'll just tell you what I use. I use a Strong's Concordance uh, that has the Hebrew and the Greek languages in it. Um, I use a Bible dictionary. You can get a good Bible dictionary. You can get one from Nelson or Zondervan. or There's so many good ones, Smith. Uh, that you can find uh, I myself I sit down a lot of times and I'll use a couple different versions of the Bible I'll read the CSB I'll read the ESV I'll read the Amplified I'll read the message I'll take all those I'll read them but I always go back to the King James and I go back to that but that just helps me and it can help you as well uh, and then I also use a commentary and that's what I use I'll use a commentary uh, by a couple different men uh, that's wrote commentaries there's a lot of good commentaries out there so uh, most of those can be found uh, in the Christian bookstore. 
Uh, if you want, if you want to ask me about some good commentaries, I can give you a, a list or two of some names that I would encourage you to buy and get as well. So, uh, but that's just a couple of resources that I use. So, hopefully, that can be a help to you tonight. But if everybody would, let's stand to their feet. And uh, as the time of invitation is here, if you feel the need to come and pray, uh, this altar is open tonight as they sing, My the Lord. time uh, but we uh, also we can encourage you to stay as well it's totally up to you uh, but uh, we're at